Here's to the boys who make fishing their living. It's time to haul in the nets full of fish. All hands to the braces, close hauled and underway. Never spit to windward in the Great Lakes fishing trade. Hear the throb of her engine, the crying of seagulls, dipping and weaving around the old LCJ. Hi, my name is Amelia, and this is the old LCJ. Our day's work soon be laid. We learned the ropes the hard way in the Great Lakes fishing trade. This is a story about fishing on the Great Lakes. There are five freshwater Great Lakes. Lake Superior, Lake Michigan, Lake Huron, and Lake Erie, and Lake Ontario. The Great Lakes are the largest group of freshwater lakes on Earth. They were formed 14,000 years ago by slow-moving ice glaciers, leaving the Michigan Mitten. As the glaciers melted, the massive holes were filled with water. Well, today there are 177 species or kinds of fish in the lakes. Salmon, lake trout, and perch are the most common fish that the commercial fishermen take out of the lakes. What is commercial fishing? Well, there are a lot of different ways to catch fish. Bears can grab them right out of the air. Some people use spears. Some catch fish with a pole and a worm. Some hire or charter a boat and go fishing. Commercial fishermen go out in fish tubs like the LCJ and they haul in large nets full of fish and then they sell their catch to restaurants and markets. This is their full-time job. Over 90 years ago, thousands of commercial fishermen worked on the Great Lakes. The Evelynists in the LCJ are gillnet fishing tubs. What's a gillnet? A gillnet is like putting a tennis net in the water to snag the fish by their gills. Michigan Maritime Museum volunteer Frank James explains. Uh, on the top of the tennis net, we put some, something that floats. And then they, on the bottom of the net, they put lead weight. When they would put the net in the water then, the lead wants to go down. The float wants to go up, and that stretches the net out underwater. When the, the fisherman brings up his net, uh, he has all the, the virtually the, the right size fish. Well, Judy Slack knows lots about gill nets. She learned that from her father, who is captain of the LCJ. They would be put on large reels to dry and to be mended as the net reel went around and then after they were fixed and dried they would be replaced into the net box to be set out in the lake again. How do they make new gill nets? Fishermen often built them in their homes. My dad would bring home large reel and every winter move all the furniture aside in the living room and the dining room and make nets by stretching these lines from one end of the house to the other and then sewing on the netting. Okay, okay, let's go fishing. First we need to start that big engine in the LCJ, right? That big engine is called a Kellenberg diesel engine. You don't just turn a key to start it. They had blow torches on, that were aimed at the top of each cylinder and they would before starting the engine, they would go in there and run the blow torches. It took about a half an hour to get from the time that they said, let's start the motor from the, until the time that they were putting a lot of soot in the air. What did they do when they hauled in the big gill nets full of fish? Fishing is hard work. The first thing that the fishermen do is they go out and set their nets. A few days later, they come back and they pull up the nets. They sort out the fish, throw back those that are too small, put the keepers in boxes, and ice them down to keep them fresh. Years ago, blocks of ice were cut from area lakes and stored in ice houses, and then used all summer by the fishermen to ice down their catch. Where did the South Haven fishermen sell their fish? Fish from South Haven's port was shipped to markets 
to the west and east of here. One family of fishermen, the Jensens, brought in their fish, and they sold it to local resorts and restaurants, and from their store in the Black River. Captain Lou's restaurant is there now. Did the fishermen go out in the winter? Fish tugboat captain Don Nichols can answer that question. They had nets out there, they had to get out to them, but they had to get out the river. Well, if the ice was heavy, like over four or five inches, those underpowered tugs individually could not get through the ice. It'd take the entire day sometimes to break a channel out. I bet you have questions for Judy Schlock. Did you go fishing with your dad? Not very often. Girls weren't allowed there, and the crew was all men. So a girlfriend and I went out one time, I remember, and then I was allowed to steer the boat back to South Haven. And then the time when the tugs pulled out a couple of freighters out of the harbor, I was allowed to ride along for that. One winter day, Judy got a very special treat. She watched her father bring the LCJ up the ice-filled channel, and here's what happened. I was just watching, and the tug stopped. My dad got out, walked over. He says, you want to come aboard? I thought, oh, wow, yeah. so this is good. He says, now step where I step. And I stepped exactly in his footprints that would, so they would be safe and got to finish the day on the tug. I brought a plastic fish to, sh to share day. Did you bring fish to your school? I wasn't crazy about dissecting animals, but for extra credit, I brought in a bucket of fresh alewives one time for dissection. And they hadn't been in formaldehyde, so they were very fresh. And my friends didn't appreciate that too much. I bet your dad brought home lots of fish for dinner. I remember one time particularly, he brought home a bucket of perch and they were still alive. And so I kept pouring water on them to keep them alive and some fell out onto the floor and I'd still pour water over them. But I just made a big mess and kind of got in trouble for something that was going to be supper. Are there still a lot of commercial fishermen working on the Great Lakes? Well, just a few make their living as commercial fishermen on the Great Lakes today. Overfishing, pollution, an invasion of fish with names like sea lamprey and alewife nearly wiped out the fish people like to eat. But through good conservation efforts, many kinds of fish have been planted in the lakes and today, about 100 million pounds of fish are still caught commercially and end up on dinner plates throughout the Great Lakes. I know that the Evelyn Nest is here today as an exhibit, but where's the LCJ? Well, it's still in the harbor, but now instead of used as a fishing tug, it takes people for rides. The captain is Bob Jensen the original owner's grandson. Bob and his wife operate this unique charter service, docking the LCJ very close to its South Haven home since 1945. Thanks everyone, it was fun to learn about commercial fishing on the Great Lakes. Oh daddy, take me back to Van Buren County, down to the channel where the Black River flows. Where the air smell like fish and the bait house is waiting with a hook and a line and a kingfish and pole. Oh, Daddy, take me back to Van Buren County, down to the channel where the Black River flows. Where the air smell like fish and the bait house is waiting with a hook and a line and a kingfish and pole. Thanks for watching.